What's up, Internet? It is I, Shroom, and welcome to my channel. And tonight I'm going to be playing some modern on Magic the Gathering Online. So recently, the Lord of the Rings set released, which is legal and modern. Um, it's an interesting set. Um, and as soon as it was spoiled, I knew there was a card that I wanted to try. So in modern, there's this tradition of like naming decks eight something or other, um, because you have eight copies of a particular effect. Like there's eight rack, eight whack, there's eight cast, there's eight field nowadays. Well, with the Lord of the Rings set, we can play eight man, maybe you could call it. What do I mean by that? Let's take a look at the list. So the Lord of the Rings card that I'm going to be playing with tonight is Reprieve. This is one white and one for an instant, return target spell to its owner's hand, draw a card. So this is Remand in white. Uh, Remand is this uh, one blue and a white counter target spell. If the spell is countered this way, put it into its owner's hand. Instead of on top of it, instead of that player's graveyard, draw a card. So this is basically the identical effect as Remand. Um, Reprieve is actually a little bit better because since it isn't countering, it can actually hit things that are uncounterable, such as creatures that are cast off of Cavern of Souls or like, uh, you know, supreme verdict stuff like that but essentially it is the same thing which is a very nice tempo play you know it doesn't seem like it's really that powerful but just like setting person a person's playback a turn replacing itself immediately instant speed it's very disruptive um really gives you tempo particularly when, when it's used against um spells that cost a lot more than two mana so what are we going to be doing with these effects well we are playing a sort of Jeskai prison strategy and we are trying to couple these remands with a couple of other effects one of those is rule of law effects things like rule of law that say that each player can't cast more than one spell each turn um, as well as ether sworn canonist this is a two mana artifact creature each player who has cast a non-artifact spell this turn can't cast additional non-artifact spells so this is kind of better than rule of law in a way because it's cheaper um, but it's also a creature that can be destroyed and also it's just a deck that has a lot of artifacts kind of ignores this effect. Um, the third rule of law effect we have is Archon of Emilia. It's a 3-mana 2-3 flyer. Um, each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. Non-basic lands your opponent's control ETB tapped, which is also kind of nice. So with these kinds of effects in place, um, the temple loss is a lot more magnified from our remands. But uh, there is a third piece of the puzzle that we're trying to add, and that is this jerk to Fairy Time Raveler. You know him, you hate him. Uh, one blue, one white, and one for a pl Planeswalker static ability. Each opponent can cast spells only when they could cast a sorcery. Um, it can plus one to allow us to cast sorceries during our opponent's turn, which is cool because anything that's, you know, sorcery speed will be able to play on our opponent's turn. Um, as, as our one spell for the turn. So that's kind of neat. And it can minus three to bounce an artifact, creature, or enchantment and draw a card. Um, Teferi's busted. You know, you all know him. But what this primarily does is if we have like a Teferi and a rule of law effect on the battlefield at the same time, this means that our opponent can only cast one spell per turn cycle at sorcery speed on their turn, which we then proceed to remand with our eight remands. So basically, we can kind of lock our opponent out of really doing anything meaningful. Of course, we can always choose to let spells resolve if they're not like something that's going to break up our lock. But, um, you know, we have eight remands, so we're going to have access to the remands when we need them. We'll be able to uh, prevent our opponent from making any meaningful plays. In fact, we want this Teferi uh, static ability so much, we are playing two Teferi Mage of Zulfir. We really, really want our opponent to only be able to play at sorcery speed to maximize the effect of our rule of law effects. So uh, this Teferi is five mana for a 3-4 flash creature. Creatures cards you control you own that aren't on the battlefield have flash. That doesn't really matter. Each opponent can only each opponent can only cast spells anytime they could cast a sorcery. So he does the same thing as Teferi's static ability. So that's the idea. We're going to restrict our opponent to playing only one spell per turn cycle on their source at sorcery speed on their turn, and we're going to remand it. Our win condition will be fevered visions. This is one of them anyway. This uh, enchantment is a. Th Red, blue, and one. At the beginning of each player's end step, that player draws a card. If that player is your opponent and has four or more cards in their hand, it deals two damage to that player. So since they're only going to be able to play one card per turn cycle, um, they're going to just accumulate cards in their hand from Fever Vision, and they're going to start taking damage that way. Um, of course, we also can attack with our Archons and our Aether Sworn Canadas. This is not really much of a clock. So we need something a little bit more to speed it up, and that is why I'm running two Wandering Emperor, um, who can be a win con. She can create uh, uh, Samurai tokens. She can also just add plus one, plus one counters to our Archons of Amiris or Aether Sworn Canadas. And of course, um, 
She can be played at instant speed with flash and, and can minus two to exile target tapped creature. You gain two life. So she is like a removal piece as well. Just an extremely powerful planeswalker that is a a good choice in, in like a controlish decks such as what we're playing. And we are in Esper, so we, uh, uh, sorry, we're in Jeskai, so we do have good interaction. We're playing a bit of removal, of course, a couple of lightning bolts to bolt those, uh, you know, turn one Raghavans, DRCs, a couple of March of Otherworldly Lights. I am a fan of this card in Modern because it is one mana instant speed destroy Urza Saga, which is great. And then, of course, a couple of prismatic endings. Um, so coupled with the, the Wandering Emperors, that's like eight pieces of uh, removal that we have access to. Of course, we can always bounce our opponent's creatures with Teferis and then remand them on the way back down, etc. Uh, a total of 25 lands in the deck. We do want to make our land drops. We want to get up to 5 mana so that we can play a 3 mana play like a, like an Archon or Teferi and hold up a remand. Um, no major exciting tech here. Uh, we're leaning uh, blue a lot because um, Teferi Mage of Zalfir does have triple blue as its casting cost. The only tech we have really is um, Otawara. So that is the main board plan. We're going to try to lock our opponents out with um, Teferi, Rule of Law, and all of our remands, our eight remands. The sideboard includes a couple of Hallowed Moonlights for, like, Indomitable Creativity decks, also good against, uh, like, um, Living End. Three Hushbringers shut down all of the ETB stuff that happens in Modern these days, which is a lot. They're, those Elemental decks are out there. And um, they all just lean so heavily on the ETBs. So I'm a firm believer in effects like Hushbringer to shut down those ETBs. It really, you'll be surprised how many decks just cannot function with this effect on the battlefield. A couple of rest in peace to deal with uh, graveyards. Stony Silence is here for artifact decks. Um, I noticed in testing this deck that uh, there's uh, quite a bit of uh, like Samwise and Rosie artifact combat decks, combo decks using like Academy Manufacturers to create a bunch of tokens. I like Stony Silence in this environment because it just shuts down the activation of all of those food, treasure, and clue tokens, which is really, really nice. Uh, one Alpine Moon against Tron and Urza Saga. Uh, Anger of the Gods and Supreme Verdicts are sweepers. A couple of Dovin's Vetoes for use against Control. One Lightning Helix is another creature removal spell that can be used in aggro matchups like Burn. And one Wear Tear is an additional piece of hate for those Urza Sagas, other artifacts, and enchantments. So that is the plan. We're going to do some 8 man um we'll see how it goes um i've I found this fun deck fun um i don't know how many matches we'll win but uh, it's still in the very early stage in particular i'm not sure if the mana base is correct oh uh, i should mention that we do have a fiend's tower in addition to our rock run triome um this is in order to allow us to play a prismatic ending for four colors if needed um so i'm going to run through some matches on the practice queue again like leagues are just a little too sweaty uh, they tend to be um they tend to really lack diversity, you know? It's not that much fun to just play Murktide after Murktide after Hammer Time after Hammer Time after Creativity. Um, so I, I'm going to play in the practice queues. If there was some demand for me to play leagues with my decks in Modern, uh, if you wanted to leave a comment to that effect, uh, I would certainly consider it. If I got some comments saying, hey, Shroom, we really want you to play leagues. But for now, I'm going to stick to the practice queue just because it's a little uh, less, little less tense. Anyway, that is the deck. Let's remand some fools. And if you like this kind of off meta, off kilter MTG content, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. All right, we're against Chummy Mesa, and we're on the play. And this is a reasonable hand. I've got a couple of lands and a canonist. Uh, so I've got I've got the rule of law effects covered. I got some removal. We can keep this. Temple of Deceit. Is this like Ad Nauseum? I think that's the only deck that plays Temples. Lotus Bloom. Yeah, it's Ad Nauseum. So, we'll see. Maybe our... um. I don't know how Rule of Law effects interact with Ad Nauseum. Let's grab our Jeskai Triome. So, our life total is not really relevant. Let's get a 
Hallowed Fountain. And play our Canonist. We need a Teferi, because in addition to all the other jerk things he does, he just absolutely shuts down um, suspend effects. They scry to the top. That's not a good sign. Alright, let's get in for two with the Canonist. Let's play Archon. I also wouldn't mind a remand, one of our eight remands. So they won't be able to do anything else to turn their uh, Lotus Bloom comes down, because that'll be their one spell for turn. Profane Tutor. Okay, I really need it to ferry. And I don't get it. Yep, Teferi, please. I will accept either Teferi. Here comes Lotus Bloom. If they cast it, they can't do anything else this turn. They do cast it. Red Ship Reef. Haven't seen that one before. Alright. I would really like a Teferi, please. Either version. Nope. Well, I can Prismatic Ending the Lotus Bloom. And I can Otawara, which isn't a spell, if there is something that is useful to Otawara, like a Phyrexian Unlife or something. Here comes Profane Tutor. That is all they'll be able to cast this turn. But it is scary. What could they have gotten? Let's 
It's got to be one of their combo pieces, right? Like for Vexine Unlife. I think they're going to have a hard time comboing off through these uh, rule of laws. No, you can't cast a spell. Yeah, you can put a charge counter on your land, sure. I wouldn't mind a remand. The Wandering Emperor. I'm just going to hold up this Odawara. They are at six. So... On their end step, if they don't affect my board, I can Wandering Emperor make a token and then I'll have lethal for next turn. They just pass, okay. So let's Wandering Emperor. Angel's Grace. You can't lose the game this turn, okay? You won't lose the game on your turn, but you will on my turn. Uh, you can't cast another spell. Sorry to break it to you. Two different rule of law effects in play. Opponent, are you going to figure it out? Okay, good. Tap your mana. Scoop. So they conveniently tap themselves out for our turn, so we just kill them. Okay, yeah, I, they really need to be able to multi-spell, I think, to go off, so I think that our just basic strategy kind of just nerfs their whole deck. Let's get some Dovin's Vetoes. Let's get a Wear Tear. I don't need Lightning Bolts. What else do I not need? I'll go with one Prismatic Ending. Because they need to, like, Angel's Grace plus Ad Nauseam. 
if they just play Phyrexian Unlife, I have ways to deal with that so that they won't be able to untap with it. Okay, uh, we've got a wear tear and we've got an archon, so I think this is a keep. We've also got a Teferi, it's the five mana version, unfortunately. We got double Lotus Bloom on suspend. I'm gonna try it. Clean this down a little bit. Just a little bit. All right, let's get our Just Guy Triome. I guess I could have gone for um, Esper since I already have red covered with my Sulphur Falls. It doesn't matter. Let's just play the Falls. I haven't seen a Remand yet. <laughs> As they're coming down next turn. Well, if this Archon gets countered, it could be a problem. There's a Reprieve. But I think I gotta go for Archon. Okay. Oh man, so they can actually only cast one of their Lotus Blooms because of the Archon. They're going to just lose one, and that will be their spell for the turn. That's brutal. Jeez. That's your spell for the turn. Seacomb Coast ETB's tapped. I like Archon of Emeria a lot. No, nope, you can't cast a spell. Sorry. Okay. I think I want to play Archon number two here. just in case they have an answer to the first one. So next turn, I can leave up Remand and then play it to Fairy on their end step. And then we're we got the lock. Profane tutor. All right, let's go grab Rafine's Tower. 
another remand. I like it. This this fairy actually is quite good for this deck because you can play it at instant speed. It also doesn't get prismatic endinged very easily. I almost like it better than three minutes of fairy. Of course, three minutes of fairy like draws you cards, lets you play your your sorceries at uh, instant speed, etc. But costs two less. But this guy's good. Okay, so we're gonna play Teferi. Let's get... Doesn't really matter that much. Planes. Let's go. Blue, blue, blue. Whatever, whatever. So now our opponent can play one spell per turn cycle. Sorcery speed during their turn. We have two remands up to thwart their spells, so I think we got this. I'll drop the Fevered Visions here, too. I don't see how they can possibly come back from this. This is the lock. Fevered Visions. Blue, red, whatever. Not that I really needed it. They're dead to our combat step next turn anyway. We get to draw a card. Rule of Law. Alright, what is your one spell going to be this turn cycle? Phyrexian Unlife. Uh, how about a Remand? Uh, sorry, you cannot cast any more spells. Nor could you cast at instant speed if you could cast spells. And they scoop. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, we are. Our deck is a nightmare matchup for that deck, which absolutely needs to multi spell to win. But still, we got to see the uh, the full lock come down there. So that was sweet. All right, we're against Alligatier. Um, this hand looks fine. We've got some removal. We've got rule of law. We just need to draw end to fairy. Just need to draw land. Or is this saga? Springleaf Jump. Well, this is why I like March of Otherworldly Light. Because I can do things like...
destroy Inner's Saga at instant speed for one mana. Potsies. Pithing Needle. Naming to Fairy Time Raveler. Okay. Don't really need to Fairy other than his static ability, TBH. I probably will remand whatever they play here just to draw a card and try to find my third land. Scrapwork Mutts. Um, yeah, I'm going to remand this. Just to draw a card. Okay, do you need to draw land number three? And we got it. So let's fetch... What, a mountain? Sure. Maybe that should be, it should have been a steam vents. All right, to ferry down. Here comes the mutt. Underworld Cookbook. They've got the Daredevil. Okay, there's a lot of decks like this circulating. That's why I've got the Stony Silence in the board. Alright. Let's play Rule of Law. I kind of wish we had done this last turn instead of Teferi. But what can you do? So, opponent gets one spell. Removal for the Mutt would be nice. Veto. So they're going to drain us out with Veto. <laughs> More fevered visions. Okay. See, this is a position where I kind of don't want to play Fevered Visions. Because they only have one card in hand. They have the attackers to kill my Teferi. Kind of in a bad spot here. But I guess I'm going to. I have the whole playset in hand. Attacking me? Not even attacking Teferi. So they're gonna drain me out with food tokens? Is that the plan? Um, which is a good plan. Prismatic ending the veto. Hey, how's it going? Fatal gaming. So they just drain me out here. 
right? Now they get to me to two, but then they can attack for two and I die. Well, that was unfortunate, but we have good stuff in our sideboard. Here's a wear tear. Stony silence. Rest in peace. Bring an Alpine Moon for Urza Saga. Lightning Helix, maybe? Probably not. Let's cut a rule of law. Uh, there was a pithy needle naming Teferi. So I could not activate Teferi. They wisely, like, turn one, pithy needle Teferi before even seeing what I was playing. Um, what else? The Canonist is not good against them because they are all about the artifacts. In fact, I probably want all the rule of laws. <laughs> yeah, it would have been nice to be able to use him there, but un unfortunately, they guessed correctly. I guess when you see, you know, someone lead on the Hallowed Fountain, it's a pretty good chance they have a Teferi. Alright, we've got some hate for their artifacts. We've got a Teferi. So I think this is good enough. Oh, what we don't have though is lands. <laughs> it was, uh, we have two lands. Hopefully that'll be enough. We'll draw some. Underworld Cookbook. And they've got the Daredevil. For the leaving the battlefield trigger? Oh, for um, Oval Chase? I've already got the rest in peace. I don't think I need to bring in that many sideboard slots to shut that down. Um, let's just play our steam vents and just wear the cookbook. There's a saga. Well, we got the answer to that. Another cookbook. Yeah, it's like, it also doesn't do anything other than shut down the, uh, the oval chase, which, theoretically, they shouldn't have that every single time. Perhaps it would have been better to do that than Rest in Peace, since also, uh, Rest in Peace only hates on the Daredevil. So let's just go ahead and blow up this saga. There's the mud. Discards the oval chase. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely um, an argument for Hushbringer as well. Prismatic ending. So I think I'll just bounce the mutt here. Draw a card. Hopefully draw a land. 
There's the land. It is amazing that the Underworld cookbook stick, they always, they really always do seem to have the, the Daredevil every single time. Kind of like how Tron players just seem to have turn 3 Tron every single game. Like, Living End players have, uh, have Cascade on turn 3 every single time. Can I get my stony silence? Herald of Anguish. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent discards a card. They cost the mana to activate their ability. Okay. Um, sure. What do I discard? Probably Fevered Vision, since I have two. More fevered visions. Boy, we're just not drawing well this game at all. Yeah, I'm definitely plusing this Teferi. I'm considering whether I should play this second Teferi and bounce. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Play the second one, bounce the Heralds. Make them use up their whole turn next turn. Maybe draw something good? I don't know if I have a good answer for the Herald in my deck right now. I'm, I'm definitely not executing my, my game plan at the moment. Okay. They have the Shadow Spear too, so they can make him a 6-6 six, six Trample Lifelink. <sighs> if only I had another land, I could remand that. I guess it's Fevered Visions again. Okay. So I guess I'm getting rid of the cookbook or the shadow spear. Probably the shadow spear. Uh, the cookbook will also kill me if they find a veto, but, um... I need a series of good draws here. <laughs> Not sure what those would be. There's the mutt. Okay. 
There's Asmorano. Yeah, the demon is going to kill me. <laughs> so they're going to deal 8, 9, 10. Probably 8 because they'll kill the Teferi. Oh, uh, Esmeralda can't attack this turn, of course. Unearth Vito. Discard Remand. And that's GG. Well... We had some good sideboard cards, but we didn't find any, unfortunately. They just kind of out-tempoed us there. Too bad. Treasures, uh, we're against Randizi. And... We're on the draw. We've got five lands and two remands. Uh, remands do redraw, but I think I need something a little more substantive. This isn't really that much of an improvement, but um, I guess I'll keep this. I'm not going to five, and I'll bottom. What, Glacial Fortress? Should have bought a mountain. Oh, what the heck? Is this like a... Is this M. Hayashi Blue? Oh no, this is probably Mill. Return Oboro to its owner's hand. So they do that so that they can bounce the land back and forth for the crabs. They play Chalice on zero. Expedition map. Let's grab Rafine's Tower. That's fine, we don't use our graveyard at all. I'm really not sure. This land makes me think, would make me think that they're mill, but um, expedition map? Chalice is not a card that usually, uh... oh, the 2020 land thing? I don't think I know that one. Oh, it's just Tron. Dark Depths? Dark Depths is not uh, legal in modern. Tron piece number two. We got Remands. Well, it's it's mono blue Tron. 
is what it is. Walking Ballista. Let's remand that. Prismatic Ending. Cannonist isn't great against them because they do play lots of artifacts, but it's something to play. Actually, I think Mono Bluetron, other than like counter spells, like everything they play is an artifact. They might have like an Ugin or Karn or two. Uh, we could prismatically walking ballista, yes. For like one mana, right? Because it's a, it's an X spell which counts as zero. I think it would only cost um. I think it would only cost one mana. But I don't mind cycling these remands either. I draw land. No. I'm having trouble get, making my land drops today. So I think at this point, I am going to just play my rule of law. Let them resolve their ballista. Teleria West. So looking for a zero cost spell? Oh, uh, versus tower. Okay. That is something that Mono Bluetron can do. There's the Ballista. X equals three. I'm actually totally fine with him hanging down my Cannonist. I believe that I can kill the Ballista for a single mana. Let us test this theory. So now I do have double remand against whatever bombs they're about to drop. And the rule of law is down, so they can only cast one spell per turn. Cityscape Leveler. Oh, it's a cast trigger. When you cast it and when it attacks. Well, I guess I remand, but it still gets its uh, thing. Sadly.
I get a power stone. This does me zero good. I guess I can cast the uh, canonist with it, actually. Ken, this is an artifact. Let's go Fevered Visions. Canonist. Get to draw a card. I don't know if we can just beat repeated cityscape levelers, though. Leveler is also an artifact, so uh, they can cast additional spells after it. Targeting feature revisions? Well, hey, they don't get to draw a card, at least. Let's take a reprieve from all the leveling. They have a counter spell. Condescend. Why is this card so dumb? March of Otherworldly Lights. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, no, can't quite get up to eight. I don't have any white cards in hand. Play out Fevered Visions. It's possible I'll draw a white card or two, and then I might be able to get the cost of this down low enough to kill the leveler, although, of course, they have counter magic too. Repeal. That's fine. That's not really doing anything. Again, blowing up Fevered Visions. Well, they're not targeting my lands. Which is something. That actually gives us a white card in hand that we can pitch to the Otherworldly Light. So, maybe? Let's see. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight.
So X is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they counter and GG's. You know, sometimes I feel like Path to Exile is the card that you want. All right. We don't have a lot against Tron. Uh, we got Alpine Moon, Stony Silence. Hushbringer doesn't do anything. Dovin's Veto. And wear tear. Lightning bolts useless. Prismatic ending doesn't do much. Like I don't care about relic of progenitus. I don't care about chalice of the void. Yeah, I probably cut Prismatic Ending. March of Otherworldly Light theoretically can hit anything. I don't even think Wear Tear is good, really. Oh, the Aether is Sworn Canonist, though. It just, it really is, does nothing. So what's better than that? I mean, I guess Prismatic Ending is better than the Canonist. Because maybe you can hit like a, an egg or something. We have an Alpine Moon. And that's it. Is that good enough to keep? Is it good enough to keep? What would I even fetch if, if I went for it turn one? I guess I would be going for it turn two. I fetch my Jeskai Triome. And just hope to draw lands. Ugh, that is like the best card in my deck against them. I think I just gotta... Got to pray to the magic gods to give me lands. Uh, I'm not going to go for it turn one. They don't play Spell Pierce. Expedition map. Please, magic gods, be merciful against us non-Tron players. Okay. We did find a land. Let's go ahead and Alpine Moon. We'll name Urza's Tower. Archon. Well, I will remand just about anything that gets played just to draw a uh, draw card. Now, if they have Blast Zone, that could be a problem. They usually do. Versus mine. Okay. 
I guess uh, Mono Blue Tron doesn't play a Blast Zone. No, regular Tron usually does, and that's why Alpine Moon is not very good against them, in my experience. Trinket Mage. I will remand that. Please give me a land. Cannot find the land. Okay, well, I do get another redraw. Remand. Reprieve, rather. You remand. Okay, there's a land. Now I can Teferi. I'll go ahead and just plus it. I don't want to get taken down by a 2 2 walking ballista. Do we have a chance? Trinket Mage. Finds what? Pithy Needle? Expedition map, walking ballista. All right, let's continue plusing to fairy. And let's play Archon. So we have the lock assembled. They can only cast one spell per turn cycle, sorcery speed on their turn. They can get down. Ah, land enters tapped. Opponent, what are you doing? You'll have to work with just regular old men unlike the rest of us. 2-2 Two -two Ballista? Sure. If they want to attack, I was going to say I would block and offer the trade with their Ballista. Prismatic Ending is a good draw. 
Let's ending the ballista. Gonna ping my face a couple of times? Sure. And again, let's plus to fairy. Um... I want to protect my Teferi, so I'm just going to stay back with the Archon. I do have Dovin Tevito up. Of course, they, they could just naturally lay down eight lands and then Cityscape Leveler, and then this all goes to heck. I need, like, Wandering Emperor. Repeal the Alpine Moon. No. I could have just let that go, actually. Because I could just recast it. It's not like they can cast more spells. I probably should have just let that go. But then again, that counts as my one spell per turn if I recast it. Flooded Strand. Alright, I'm going to start attacking with my Archon. I gotta kill them. They're going to eventually draw land number 8 and just have the leveler. I'm going to flash in Big Teferi. Assuming I don't have to counter anything. Another walking ballista. 3-3. Three, three. Sure. Things down the Archon. Totally fine, because I do have a rule of law in hand. Come on, attack. Oh, nobody expects Big Teferi. Got him. Grab our Triome. Alright. I do have another rule of law to drop. I'm gonna minus here. I need to draw, like, the Wandering Emperor. Since I have this Teferi, I don't really need this one as much. Alright, they're up to seven.
What spell would you like to have remanded this turn, opponents? Palantir of Orthanc. At the beginning of your end step, put an influence counter on it and scry two. Then target opponent may have you draw a card. If they don't, you mill X cards where X is the number of influence counters on it, and that player loses a life equal to the mana of, total mana value of those cards. Um, I think I'll actually just veto that. Go ahead and fetch. Okay. Minus to fairy again. Draw me something good, please. Another remand is good. I just need them to not land Cityscape Leveler. Shark Typhoon. Okay, so they're going to be able to kill my Teferi Planeswalker, which is too bad. Should have figured they would have that card. Talisman of Dominance, sure. still have our lock because we have Big Teferi creature version. I need the Wandering Emperor, please. March of Otherworldly Lights. I thought about having some man lands in this deck. Like, maybe a Celestial Colonnade would do good. Or even Den of the Bugbear. Here comes the Leveler. Oh, it's just Ugin. That's fine. Wandering Emperor, please. <laughs> More remands. Okay. I do like remands. I mean, they're great in the deck. We do have them on a three-turn clock. We can Prismatic Ending the Shark if they keep it back. Let's go with actual remand this time just to mix it up. Another remand. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty confident about this one. We need them to not top deck Cityscape Leveler. That is the key. Glacial Fortress. All right. Prismatic ending the shark. Big 
Big Teferi beaten down. Just play Ugin again. Yes. Remand. <laughs> we draw another remand off the remand. All right, let's keep it up. We got him. All right. That was a good one lander, it turns out. Uh, we made the correct choice. I don't think I'd change anything. Yep. I knew Alpine Moon was, was too critical to pass up. Uh, this one lander has no sideboard cards. So I think that's definitely a mulligan. Stony Silence is excellent. So I'm keeping that. I'll bottom. Teferi or Fevered Visions? I think Teferi. Expedition map, turn one. They kept a seven card hand to... They cracked the map. Versus mine. Let's get our Rafine's Tower. Let's play Stony Silence. Force of Negation. They play Force of Negation. And we miss our land drop. So, this is looking bad. I don't like... missing land drops... against Bluetron. They missed their land drop, too. Well, we missed another land drop. 25 lands in the deck. They also missed their land drop. Okay. Can I draw a land, please? So... Do I play something? Uh, it is just likely to get countered. I think I'll wait. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go for it. I've got two rules of law. Remand would be annoying because it would let them draw. Yep. Glacial Fortress. All right, now I'm going to wait till I get a fifth land. Ugh. 
Teferi. <sighs> Boy, a fifth land would have been so good. I guess I'm going for Rule of Law again. Because I would rather this get countered than Teferi. Yeah, in Control Mirrors, it's the deck that stumbles on land that's going to lose most of the time. And that's what we are. We're behind on lands. Now they have Tron, and that's probably GG's. If they have a bomb here, I have no way to deal with it. I mean, if it's a leveler, I can bounce it with Teferi, but it still gets to the, the cast trigger. If it's like an Ugin or something, Teferi can't actually deal with it. Thirst for Knowledge. Opponents is in the red on time. Discards double dismember. Shark Typhoon. Hard cast. Yeah, that's going to be real tough to beat. Okay, I need a land right now. Right now, please. Yeah, I think that's game. I can bounce the Shark Typhoon. They're going to start making gigantic sharks. I can bounce it. They just ca cast it again. I can't remand it because I don't have mana. I don't know. I could draw a land off to Fairy. That's what I'm hoping for. To Fairy, I need you to draw me an untapped land, please. No. Got to discard. Uh, I guess I'll discard Rule of Law. I don't necessarily want to let on that I have a million remands in my hand. Uh, if I could just have drawn that fifth land. Yeah, Resolved Shark Typhoon is going to just destroy us. Mind Slaver. Fun card. So, I don't want to go through Mind Slaver stuff. If I don't draw something right now, I'll just scoop. Like, what would it be? A Wear Tear would be beautiful. Yeah, I'll just scoop. I, I don't want to sit through Mind Slaver, <laughs> so pretty sure they got us. Like, I can kill the shark.
I guess I'll play it out. Dugan makes a 7-7 seven, seven shark. Okay, now I can't... Um, if I remand, I can't block and kill the shark, so... I'll just scoop. They've got the Mind Slaver queued up. They've got the Resolved Shark Typhoon. I needed to draw my fifth land so that I could remand... I could bounce the Shark Typhoon and remand it. So... Boo, that was sad. That was very sad. But hey, game two. We got game two. Kilgore Trout 503 is our opponents. Their Squee Avatar. Um This is good. Hopefully Canonist is good against them. Chancellor of the Forge. Okay, so they're like a, a Cascade deck. Which means Teferi would be, will be great. Actually, Rule of Law effects are great too. Because they shut down Cascade. They completely stop Cascade. Yep. Yeah, they are. What, whatever that red one is, I forget. That, like, replaces all your permanents with other permanents. So, yeah, we hard counter what they're doing. Another Teferi. Why am I so bad at drawing lands? Can I draw a land, please? Thank you. All right, let's get it to ferry down. Let's bounce this token and draw a card. So now we have double cascade protection. They besage you, my canonist. Drawing with clues. Suspending Glimpse of Tomorrow, that's the spell. Fury. Okay. I do have another Teferi. Can I draw a land, please? How long is that suspended for? Three turns. Cannot draw a land. Let's just plus keep out of fury range. Wave sifter, uh huh. It's a lot of clues.
Um, I think I'll just ambush it with Big Teferi when it comes to attack. They only have one card in hand. Mm-hmm. Big Tef. Nobody expects Big Teferi. Now I have two Teferi effects shutting down Cascade. Oh, wait. I didn't block? Oops. I meant to block the, uh, the wave sifter. Hope that doesn't cost us the game. Did I play it too late, or did I just click through? Cracking clues. <laughs> they scoop. They cannot beat the Teferi effects. Okay. So, we want Hushbringers for sure. We want... Hallowed Moonlight for sure. Dovin's Veto. Anything else? Stony Silence? I don't know. Um, my main board is all really good against them. Um, Lightning Bolts. Stony Silence does stop them from cracking clues. Not sure how important that is. I don't need all this. Definitely want all my Teferis. It's kind of fevered vision. I want all my rule of law effects, a couple of fevered visions, and one remand. Okay. Hushbringer, Archon, and Rule of Law, all good, all good cards. They again have a turn one Chancellor. All right, let's play this Hushbringer. So now they can't use Fury to remove our stuff, which is good. They also don't get anything off of their other, uh, whatever that fish is that they use, I forget what it's called, Wave Sifter. Is going to go for it. Tireless Provisioner. All 
All right. Um. Yeah, might as well attack. I'm not gonna block, right? Create a food or a treasure. Now let's go get a mountain. Play this Archon. And this Archon shuts down their Cascade, so we just gotta protect it. You've got double remand. They hit us for three. If I can draw another white source, that gives me the Wandering Emperor. Prismatic Ending, that's not bad. Force of Negation. Sure, let's attack. It's a lot of treasure. Chancellor Hardcast, okay. Ugh. Just can't draw lands. What the heck, man? I don't get it. How many lands do I have to put in my deck? If I could have drawn land number four, I would have had the Wandering Emperor available. Most likely. I guess 25 just isn't enough. Alright, I will trade for the Provisioner. Take 5. Fury is a 3-3 three, three double strike. Yeah, I think their beats are just going to do it for them. What do I kill with the Emperor? I kill Fury? Grab a planes. Yeah, exile fury, I think. Block the chancellor. No, I think I just take it for now. Go down to three. Put a counter on the Hushbringer, so it'll get us more life. When I jump with it. Attacking me. All right, now I have to block.
another provisioner. Let's remand that. Fever visions. More rule of law. All right, let's make a samurai. Let's play Fevered Visions. They do get to take down my Emperor here, unfortunately. If they double attack. Oh, they just scoop. <laughs> Okay. Uh, they're pretty well locked. I mean, they can never play their Cascade spells. They could have double attacked the, uh, the Emperor there. I would have had to chump with the Samurai. They could have killed it. I did have more Romance, but um, I would have had to deal with this somehow eventually. But, okay. Final match is against Orochi. And we're going to be on the draw again. And that's a one lander. That is a better draw, which I will keep. A bottom. Land, I guess. We can draw lands, right? We're on the draw. We have 25 of them. We have remand. Temple Garden. Is this Enchantress deck? Farseek, okay. Just ramping. Let's go for Rafines. Probably will remain just about anything here. There's a saga. Search for tomorrow. That's fine. Zurin orb. Let's go ahead and blow up the saga now. And fetch. Sure, Zurin Orb, have at. Let's go. Archon. Summoner's Pact. They can't cast it. Thrun the last stroll. Uh, you can't cast it. And next turn you have to pay for your pact. And you don't get to crack your fetch this turn either. <laughs> oh, wow. That was devastating. Can Thrun be countered? No, it can't. Okay. So I think I go for another Archon. I know next turn they have to tap out to pay for the Pact. So they're not going to be doing anything. 
Might as well get more attackers on the battlefield. All right, let's play to fairy. And let's just plus. Attempting to prismatic ending the Zurin orb on their turn. Primeval Titan. Who would have guessed? Gets in Urza's Saga. Let's just grab, I don't know, planes. Sure, let's bounce the, the Titan. Yeah, I think the Zern Orb actually is going to get them there. Because I'm not going to outrace the Saga due to the Orb. Um, in fact, I think I ending it now. Make them choose how many lands they want to sack. Just one. Okay. We do have roman Romance for that Titan. But Urza Saga is just going to beat us. Thrun. Also pretty good. Saga. They just get to get another token and fish up what? Shadow Spear? Yep. Very fair card, Urza's Saga. Pretty good land. Got you six power worth of creatures and a free Shadow Spear. So I don't know how we actually ever beat this because it's hexproof also. Um, yeah, it looks like they're going to kill Teferi. I can double block that construct. Another Archon. Yeah, I think it's safe to scoop. We actually have no way to answer Thrun. We might be able to find removal for the Shadow Spear, but just goes to show you, like one Urza Sog is all it takes. All right, Wear Tear, Stony Silence. Hushbringers. Supreme Verdict. 
how in the world do I deal with Thrun? I really have nothing. Supreme Verdict might be able to catch them if they don't have mana to regenerate. That's about the best I can hope for. Lightning Bolt is no good. Cannonist is okay. They do play artifacts, though. Cut one big Teferi. One Fevered Vision. Couple of fever visions. Yes, I would like to play first. All right, we've got a wear tear that can answer the first saga. We've got Hushbringer that can shut down prime time. Search for tomorrow. I need to draw lands. Throwing a land for Teferi would be sweet. But nope. Canonist. All right, that's your spell for the turn. Okay, so we have the lock assembled. Blue. Will it be enough? Path to exile on the canonist. Yes. Let's get, um, island, I guess. Plus. All right, we do have an Archon in hand, so we can get the Rule of Law effect back. If they go for Thrun, we'll have to Supreme Verdict. Felidar Retreat. The Wandering Emperor. All right, let's play Archon. Let's bounce Felidar Retreat. Draw a card. Now we just want to draw Remands. We had the lock. I would love to draw some Remands. There's Felidar Retreat. So do I bother spending my wear tear on it? I kind of don't think so. Because then what if they draw a Saga? I 
I don't know, it's tough. What if they draw a Saga? I don't think I do it this turn. I think I want to play the Wandering Emperor. Sagura? Gonna attack? Okay. So you can sack to search for a basic land and put it onto the battlefield. Let's Wandering Emperor. Kill the cat, I guess. Gain two life. All right, let's put a counter on the Archon. Let's plus to Fairy. Attack with Hushy B. Let's play Rule of Law, just in case they somehow manage to kill my Archon. So they're going to kill the Wandering Emperor on their turn. That's fine. Boy, I really would just like to draw Remands, like, for the rest of the game. <laughs> Remands. Cosmic Rebirth. They put it onto the battlefield. They suicide their tokens into the Wandering Emperor. Boy, I'm getting a little sick of this Felidar retreat. Maybe I should. Just take it out. Uh, if they get Urza Saga, though, it's so bad. I'm taking it out. There's another Archon. Alright, let's bounce your token draw card. Where are my remands? Let's attack with everything. Let's play another Archon. Scoot Swarm. Let's 
So they're going to have a swarm of Scoot Swarms. Fevered Visions. I think I'm going to Supreme Verdict on their turn. I'm going to have to, uh, because they're just going to get too many Scoot Swarms. So let's attack with everything. Let's Fevered Visions. And what do we draw off Fever Visions? A Remand. All right. We still have rule of law, so we have the uh, we have that effect still active. We don't have any th any threats, but the fevered visions will kill them. Whoops, I did that wrong. Summoner's Pact. You're going to have to pay for that next turn. You won't be able to afford your Titan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you tried that before, remember? The Wandering Emperor. Sweet. Pay for your pact. Haywire Might. Let's remand that. Bajuka Bog, I don't care about my graveyard. All right, they're dead in two turns to the Fever Vision. They do have a Haywire Might. I need more romance, please. Prismatic Vista is not remand.
I think I burn this to fairy. Draw a card. I would accept an Archon or a Canonist. No. Alright, let's play another Teferi. Minus it. Give me a remand, please. That's not remand. Okay, I mean... Fevered Visions, hook me up. Nope. <laughs> There's so many remands in my deck. I can't find a single one. There's the Haywire Might. They blow up Rule of Law. They get to play their prime time. They get double Urza Saga. Okay, so what I do here is play the Wandering Emperor. Make a Samurai. There's a Remand. Plus to Fairy. March, X equals 6. One, one, two, three. I'll keep my cards. X equals 6 the prime time. Attack with the Samurai. Oh, I could have plussed it. Uh, I haven't activated the Wandering Emperor this turn, have I? Let's make another Samurai. Alright, so they're dead to Fevered Visions on their turn. Blast Zone. Thrun. Okay. Shadow Spear. Remand. Shadow Spear. They can equip it. Uh, we might lose this game. So they can do one taunt construct with Urza's Saga. I can Teferi. They can't make two constructs.
Teferi, bounce the Shadow Spear. Play Stony Silence. I'll be so sad if we lose this. Play Stony Silence. Play Hushbringer. Play Canonist. Attack. They make a construct. It's only a 1-1 one, one on the plus side. I'll get rid of the Wandering Emperor and make another token. March is good. During the upkeep. Perfect. Oh no, I don't have another planes. Uh-oh. If I had planes, I could have destroyed one of those sagas in my upkeep. Well, is our entire deck enough to beat a couple of Urza sagas? We'll see. Probably not. Pithing Needle, naming Teferi. They cast a Shadow Spear. They can cast one other thing because it's an artifact. Cosmic Rebirth on Haywire Might. Well, they can't use the Haywire Might. They just gain some life, though. Attacking Teferi. Um, at this point, I don't really care about that. Land. Okay. I can kill one of these constructs. I attack with these three dudes. Get in for three or less, possibly. Uh, probably just one because they'll chump and block. 
I do have Big Teferi ready to flash in. Taking that blast zone. So they can get rid of the stony silence now. And then they can activate the Shadow Spear. Sure, you got it. Boo! Boo! Oh man. We got robbed there. I feel like there's a way that I could have navigated that. Um, I think there was one turn where I just like blew a bunch of resources, cast a, def a Teferi when I maybe didn't need to. Um, I think I could have played that a little more cautiously and gotten the win there. So our final record is two and three. And what to say about this deck? Well, we had mana difficulties, so maybe the deck needs 26 lands. Um, sorry. Maybe the deck needs 26 lands. It does really want to get to five mana so that it can play a three drop and still have two mana up for remand. Uh, so we had a few games there where we, um, we just couldn't find our lands. So going up to 26 probably would be wise. I like that. I think that the concept is sound of the deck. And we get, did get to see the lock in action a few times. The deck hard counters certain decks as we saw as well, like the, uh, the Ad Nauseam deck and the Cascade deck. Uh, our deck just naturally wrecks those decks due to the uh, rule of law and Teferi effects. So I think that the idea is sound. Fevered Visions maybe is um, not what we're looking for. It was kind of underwhelmed by it. Um, it very nearly got us the win in that last game, but um, in general, it's not something that you want to play early. It's something that you want to play when you already have the lock pieces in play. So if it is, if I do run it at all, maybe it doesn't need to be a four of. Some other kind of win condition could be good in this slot. Um, I don't know, maybe just like more walkers or uh, resilient creatures like, um, I don't know. Fear Visions does offer card draw, which the deck kind of lacks otherwise. So um, probably walkers is what you would want to go for. Um, maybe like a Jace the Mind Sculptor could replace one. That's a four drop, of course, but it's a good card draw piece. Or, um, I don't know. I just feel like this doesn't need to be a four of. It could be like a two of, uh, and the deck would probably be better off because you, there are particular situations that you want to play it in. Um, so maybe like actually a tutor would be good to have too, like an idyllic tutor that could go find Fevered Visions or Rule of Law or Stony Silence from the sideboard. We could run other like Hateful Enchantments too, um, along with the Idyllic Tutor, like maybe a Detention Sphere or something. But I just feel like this wasn't quite getting the job done. This needs to get replaced by something, some combination of cards that offers a little bit of card draw and um, more consistency in closing out the game. Either another walker, maybe just another wandering emperor, another walker, or like um, some kind of resilient creature. Yeah, I don't know, maybe like a couple of goblin rabble masters, or um, I don't know. Fear Visions just didn't, it didn't seem to cut the mustard uh, in a lot of situations. Maybe just like some big burn spells, like uh, X, X burn spells, like Bane Fire, or uh, Light Up the Night, or something like that, just to close out games in one shot. Um, but other than that, yeah, go up to 26 lands, I would say. Although really, I would think, really would think that 25 is enough. But it just didn't seem to be enough in this particular set of matches. Um, so go up to 26 lands, replace the Fevered Visions, most if not all, with, with other tech. And aside from that, I like the deck a lot. Um, 
I think the concept is sound. I think the lock works. And um, I think it's cool that it just hard counters a, a lot of stuff in modern. But that is going to do it for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. This uh, presentation of 8 Man. Um, if you do like this kind of off-meta, off-kilter MTG content, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.